So inverses of functions undo. So in algebra, there's there's some big th kind of ideas that are just general ideas, and one of them is doing and undoing. Um, and you know when you solve equations, you're doing the, you're undoing all the time. If I have x plus two equals seven, this plus two is a doing to x. We undo it to get to what the x value is. And again. Um, we, we do this sort of thing all the time, but now what we're going to do is we're going to start to find the inverse of functions. We're going to undo a function. So here's a, I'm going to go with that example I just did. If a, my function is x minus 2, notice if I have, um, in this case, f of 5, 5 minus 2 is 3. The output is 3. So if I plug 5 into this function machine, it spits out 3. So I have some function f. If I plug in 5, it spits out a 3. Now that is a, uh, there's a 1 to 1 relationship here in this function. Any x that I plug in spits out 1y. And that's how I can tell if a function is, uh, is invertible, if it has an inverse. Um, so let's think about the inverse of this. The way that we denote the inverse is this notation here. Now it looks like it says f to the negative one power, and we're used to negative one power like five to the negative one power is one fifth. Um, in this notation, it doesn't automatically uh, flip it like it does here. What this means is what what's the thing that undoes f? In other words, I wanna run it in reverse. I wanna take this three, shove it back up through there, and a 5 should spit out. So if I plug 3 into the inverse of f, it should spit out a 5. See how it undoes it. And actually, you can probably just do this one by inspection. It's just adding 2. Now, those two functions undo each other, um, f and f inverse. So in other words, if I take 5, plug it into f, it spits out a 3. And then if I take that 3, oops, sorry, plug it into the inverse of f, I'm going to get what I started with again. It completely undoes it. Now, in this case, one way to think about this, I had this process. I had uh, y equals x plus 2. So if I know x, I add 2 to it and I get y. Now if I wanted to run that backwards, if I have y, I'm going to undo that adding 2. I would subtract 2 from it, and I'd get not 2, but x. I can tell that these two are inverses. I can actually prove that they're inverses of each other by doing this. Um, f of f inverse of x should give me x as well as f inverse of f of x should give me x. Those so should both be true. Now remember, um, this composition of functions, this does not commute. So f of f inverse is not guaranteed to equal f inverse of f. You would need to check them both. Um, so let's do that. Let's do this bottom one first. Um, f inverse of f of x. Well, f of x is x minus 2. And then I'm going to plug that into what I'm saying is the inverse x plus 2. So f inverse is input plus 2. My input is x minus 2. And you can see how the minus 2 plus 2 cancel each other out. And that gives me x. So f inverse of f of x is x. And if I check the other one, um, f of f inverse of x. Let's see, f inverse is x plus 2. I'm going to plug that into f. So f is input minus 2, right? x minus 2. Uh, my input is x plus 2. And again, you can see the plus 2 minus 2 is just a 0. So that also equals x. Check. So those are inverses of each other. They always undo each other, is what I just proved by showing this. So 
inversers, inverses. This is true for them. So I have this function, um, g of x is equal to 2x plus 3, and I want to find its inverse, if the inverse exists, uh, g inverse of x. So um, I'm going to think of this in terms of x and y. I have some input, 2x plus 3, and if I input that x, I get out the y. So x is, is my input, and y is my output. What an inverse does is an inverse switches those two things. So in other words, uh, my input becomes my output, and my output becomes my input. So one thing I can do is I can just switch x and y. Now I'm not saying these are this is equal to g of x. This is me trying to find the inverse of x. So I'm going to switch x and y. So x equals 2y plus 3. So if this is actually an inverse, this is it right here. Um, but it's not in a, in a form where I can just input x and get the answer right away. I need to solve this for y. So notice the, the first thing I did was I, I switched x and y. <clears throat> well, actually, I mean, the first thing I did is I replaced g of x with y. But I switch x and y. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve it for y. Get y all alone. Get my output spot all alone. So I want to get y all alone. You know how to do these. Subtract 3 from both sides. x minus 3 equals 2y. Divide everything by 2. And y equals x minus 3 over 2. So I'm claiming that my inverse is, in fact, uh, x minus 3 over 2. And hopefully you can see how that undoes it. Like here, the first thing we do is multiply by 2 and then add 3. So we have x. Uh, we multiply by 2, we get something, then we add 3, and we get that output. Now if I wanted to undo that in reverse, the first thing I would have to do is subtract 3. See how it's x minus 3, and then I would divide by 2. So that's, that's pretty good evidence. Um, if I wanted to prove that these were inverses of each other, I would need to go, I would need to show that um, g of g inverse of x is x, and I would need to show that g inverse of g of x is also x. Now let's give it a go and show. So g of g inverse of x. So I'm saying that g inverse of x is x minus 3 over 2. So that would be g of x minus 3 over 2. All right, so I'm going to plug this into that. So g is, is a 2 times some input plus 3. And my input happens to be x minus 3 over 2. What I'm saying, hoping is g inverse, x minus 3 over 2. And now do some algebra. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x minus 3 plus 3 is x. So yeah, that checks out. And if I do it the other way, I'm finding g inverse of g of x, and let's see, g of x is 2x plus 3. So I'm basically going to go the opposite direction, and by that I mean I'm going to take this and plug it into that. So this would be, uh, my g of x is 2x plus 3, and I'm plugging that into input minus 3 over 2. Other than that being kind of a hideous 2, and that actually being a 3. <laughs> um, do you see how I just plug this into that x spot? That right there was my x. And if I do a little algebra, 3 minus 3 is 0, 2x over 2, 2 divided by 2 is x. Those are inverses of each other. So solve for y. Check it if you're feeling like you really need to check it. And, you know, rewrite it. in that inverse form, in that function form. I, you know, I'm going to graph both of these and kind of see what they look like, just to give me a sense of the, of the graph here. So I'll have the point 1, f of 1. And we'll label it. 
So now, um, if I plug one into F, I get five out um, as the output. So I should be able to go the other way. If I go take that five and then plug it into G, what I said was the, the inverse of it, notice I get the point five one. X and Y are switched. This point maps to that point. And what's interesting is that happens all along. So like this point zero three, there's a point over here that's three zero. And it goes all the way around. X and Y switch. Here's what I find interesting about that, um, thinking graphically. This right here is my x-axis. This right here is my y-axis. If x and y switch, everything associated with this goes to y, and everything associated with this goes to x. So notice that it actually flips. It actually... Um, reflects across this vertical line. It, it reflects across, not vertical, but a diagonal line. And that point must be x and y are the same value, negative three and negative three. So if f of x, if I graph it, its inverse will be uh, reflective, will be have that reflective symmetry across this diagonal line, y equals x, because x and y switched. So here's three functions, and let's go ahead and find the inverse of each of these, assuming it exists. So um, I'm going to replace that with a y, and I'm going to switch x and y. So my output becomes an input, my input becomes an output, and now I'm going to solve for y. In other words, get that output spot all alone, so I can write this as a function. Add 2 to both sides x plus 2 equals 3y. Uh, this is 3 times y, so divide everything by 3. There it is. There, That's my inverse. And I could check it by plugging it into that and plugging that into it. Make sure they both output x. Uh, next one. Same game. Write this in terms of y and x. And, uh, oh yeah, switch x and y. Switch the input and the output. All right, and solve for y, get y alone. So as I look at this, if I knew y, I would cube it, then subtract 2, then divide by 7. So I want to multiply both sides by 7 first. That should be an x. Add 2 to both sides. And now I want to undo that cubing. And the thing that undoes, uh, undoes cubing is cube rooting. Just like square root undoes squaring, cube rooting undoes cubing. So I could say the cube root of 7x plus 2 equals y. And that is my inverse of h. So I will write this as h inverse. So again, notice what I'm saying is if I plug a 7 into here, cube it, subtract 2, divide 7, get an answer. Then I plug that into here. I will get the exact same answer uh, that I started with back. They undo each other. All right, last one in this section, y equals x over two. Switch x and y. All right, now I wanna get y all alone. So I think that what I will do then is just uh, multiply both sides by two. I keep doing that. It's an x. And that should be my inverse. So that's interesting. I'm going to I'm going to do another one. And instead of x over 2, I'm going to make it 2 over x. So let's take a peek at this one. Uh y equals 2 over x. I'm looking for the inverse. Switch the input and the output. Now on this one, I want to get y alone. Notice it's in the denominator there. So what I could do is get it out of the denominator by multiplying both sides by y. So x, y equals two. And if I'm solving for y, divide both sides by x. And I get that. 
which is interesting. This is its own inverse. The function and the inverse are the same. Let's test that. Let's say that uh, k k was I don't know seven. K of sorry x is seven. So k of seven is two sevenths. So let's see if I plug two sevenths into the inverse to over input. Think of this as a fraction divided by a fraction, two divided by two sevenths, right? Two divided by two sevenths, which would be the same as two times seven halves. Those cancel, I get that seven back. Yeah, so that is its own inverse. So my first one is f of x equals x cubed plus five. So I'm gonna write it in y x form. Now I'm gonna find the inverse. So switch the x and the y. And let me emphasize here that I'm not saying that this and this are equal to each other. Kind of where I drew the line is where uh, it changes. What I'm doing now is I'm finding the inverse. This should be the inverse of that. I just have to show that it is. Um, so solve for y, subtract five from each side. Undo that cubing, cube root this thing. Let's graph these both and see what they see what they look like. All right, there we are. And hopefully you can see that, that symmetry right up along that, that y equals x line. I'll put it in there just so you can see it. You can see that this folds up right under that. They are they are definitely um, inverses of each other. All right, next one. Um, so let's jump into this. Y equals x squared plus two. Switch the x and the y. Subtract two from both sides, x minus two equals y squared. Square root. Now when I square root, a plus or minus comes in. Plus or minus x over two. All right, this actually lets me know that this is not a full inverse. I can't, I can't write this as the inverse of that. I could do some limiting of my, my possible inputs for it. But here's the problem. Um, let's go h of five. So 5 squared plus 2, 25 plus 2, 27. So let's plug 27 into, into this, this plus or minus square root of x minus 2. We have plus or minus square root of 25, which is plus or minus 5. Now notice that spits out two answers for us. And that means that this is not a function, this thing that we just, that we just came up with, this thing right here. So here's the deal. Like if I plug 5 into h, I get 27. But notice if I plug negative 5 into h, I still get 27. So these two inputs, I have these two inputs that go to one output. Now when I try to undo it, if I try to undo that 27, I don't know which one of these it came from. And I want to be able to undo it definitely not with possibilities. So earlier I said a one-to-one. -one. This function right here is not one-to-one. -one. And what that means to that, if I have a collection of inputs and outputs, um, multiple inputs, these two inputs go to one output. This is like a two-to-one, it's not a one-to-one. -one. So if it's, a, if it's not a one-to-one -one function, it's not fully invertible. Like this isn't a true inverse of that. I could do some limitations. I could say, okay, x is only positive numbers. Then, I, then this will undo that. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to say, um, I'm, not, I mean, I'm just going to say, not a full inverse. And here's what I want you to notice: this happens because squaring masks negative numbers, as does any even power, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, etc. Um, therefore. These aren't fully invertible. They're only partially invertible. Um, cubics, odds, like if I go uh, negative 3 to the third power, 
that comes out negative. That doesn't mask that negative number because it's a negative times a negative times a negative. So this, not fully invertible. And uh, I don't want you to limit it. I don't want you to write down. Um, I don't want you to worry about writing the domain for it. I just want you to notice that it's not a full inverse. Just two more examples, and I want to find inverses of both these functions, assuming that they exist. So k of x, I'm going to rewrite this in terms of y. And now I want to switch the input and the output. So what that means is every output spot becomes an input, and every input spot becomes an output spot. And notice I have two of them. So I have 2y plus 3. And I have y minus 1. All right, so solving this type is pretty uh, technique-y. So this is how I would go about doing it. Um, I notice I have this denominator. If I ever have a denominator, I'm not sure what to do. I'm just going to get rid of it by multiplying both sides by it. Let's multiply both sides by y minus 1. And on the right-hand side, it cancels out. That leaves me a 2y plus 3. On the left-hand side, I can distribute that x into there. So I have an xy minus an x. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this so all the y's are on the same side. And I'm doing that because I have a little trick up my sleeve that I'm going to uh, take advantage of. I'm going to add x to both sides, too. Get it out of there. So on the left-hand side, I only have things that have y's in them. And on the right-hand side, i got everything else. Now, here's what's great. Since these both have y's in them, I can factor that y out of there, right? So I can, I can factor it out. And if I do that, I get y times x minus 2 equals x plus 3. Divide both sides by that x minus 2, x plus 3 over x minus 2. And now that should be, uh, should be my, my inverse. And I could plug it back in and do a bunch of manipulation to try and, and see if it works or not. I think I'm just going to graph it on Desmos and see what happens. Wow, do you see the symmetry? If I throw in y equals x. Yeah, those are, those are definitely um, inverses of each other. Right, let's do the next one. It's the same type of problem. So it's going to be the same similar steps. Just with different numbers, I just want you to see how to do it again. So y equals 3x minus 4 over 2x plus 5. Switch x and y, switch the input and the output. All right, I've got this denominator here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by that denominator. Divides out over on the right-hand side. You can distribute that x into there on the left. So I have 2xy plus 5x. Get all the y's on the same side. Get that 5x out of there. Pay careful attention to your negative signs. Factor out a y so that y comes out. And then this is y times that, so I can divide by it. And that should be it right there. So I'm claiming that the inverse of k is x plus 3 over x minus 2. And the inverse of l, negative 5x minus 4 over 2x minus 3. Great. Hey, give these a try, uh, the assignment set. Message me any questions you have or post them in the forums.